Hi there, I'm Sana Alicia, and you're watching me on YouTube and Facebook Live. Today we are going to talk about trust building and how to build trust in the workplace. An ideal workplace has an open and honest uh, workplace environment or culture. And it is a place where people physically and psychologically feel safe feel safe to share their ideas, thoughts, and feelings, and their views. And, and uh, such an open, honest, and safe place creates a culture of innovation and creativity. And when you talk about innovation and creativity, it is such a culture that it allows people to, to, to promote, to, to proliferate their their expertise and their 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 personality growth at the same time they work they they work and they grow their skill at the same time it, it's it's kind of they learn and grow at the same time it's kind of win-win situation both for the company and the employees and ideal many tech tech companies like facebook google and microsoft offer such a such an ideal workplace. Hey Amanda. And many other companies, not uh, many other companies across the world, they don't have luxury of such an ideal workplace. And it, it, it's not difficult to uh, to build such an ideal workplace. You can build. Uh, that you can establish the ideal workplace by a, a trusting work, workplace, by, by, by giving positive feedback, by listening to them, by focusing on nonverbal cues. Uh, you can also establish trust in the workplace by, by, by putting out trust out there in the team, uh, among the team members. Uh, so people, uh, so people know that you trust them so they uh, they feel like at home and that's how there are many other ways to to establish trust in the in the workplace and that's what we are going to discuss today and my guest is paul and he has joined us from uh, uh from iceland mm -hmm. and paul how are you Thank you. I'm I'm good actually. Mm -hmm. Yes, quite good. Uh, and I I think it's half, half uh, one and a half hour past midnight. It is. Yes, it's past mm -hmm. one a.m. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and how, uh, uh, first of all, uh, welcome to our show, and thank, thank you. you uh, and uh, Amanda is saying hi to you as well. Hi. And, what do you think about the topic? And uh, before jumping into the discussion of how to establish trust in the workplace, uh, it reminds me of your story of uh, of last week that you don't have to uh, know you don't have to know your your boss or your employer that you are smarter than them. Uh, as soon as you let them know that you are better than them or you are somehow are more intellectual or more educated than them, then they will kick you out or they will make things difficult for you. Uh, you may become a threat mm -hmm. in some way. And, and, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that, I'm just saying that if, if you are, mm -hmm. if you tend to sort of see things, mm -hmm. be ahead, if you like, in, in mm -hmm. seeing what's going on, you mm -hmm. tend to sort of be a bit threatening, and especially if you're not wanting to share it with your mm -hmm. boss. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be the one that talks and gives away too much information about fellow workers. Mm -hmm. So again, this is about trust indeed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But trust between who? Mm -hmm. Is this... Is this... Um, <clears throat> Is this um, a fan club for the mm -hmm. boss? Mm -hmm. Is the is the workplace just a fan club for the boss, or is it 
a, a healthy environment where everybody is able to uh, have a certain power over what they're okay. actually doing and how mm -hmm. they're going to do it and the quality of service i'm i'm a, i'm sort of assuming this is some sort of um um a firm or a company or, or workplace that is about serving other people that, because mm -hmm. that's that, that's the only type of um, work i have been in so i don't know, mm -hmm. know any other sort of workplaces Mm -hmm. But I was just thinking today because there are mm -hmm. so many years that I can look back on, and mm -hmm. there was this one teacher that I had, and she was mm -hmm. quite shrewd. And she said, "If you want to know how, I mean, assuming that we were now going to a workplace mm -hmm. to find out ways to improve the atmosphere and the uh, trust in an, a working place, we'll go there, obviously." and take a look at the place and people would give us information that they thought everybody was happy and jolly and all that but we would go there to observe now what would we start to observe at the workplace do you know what i would go first mm -hmm. i would go to the windows and see if there are any house plants there and i would check if somebody has watered the house plants or if they were being looked after. Because that's the old fashioned way of checking how the workplaces are. If somebody is actually looking after the house plants and they're thriving and they're looking healthy, then chances are that the whole atmosphere at the workplace is healthy. You're actually looking after. There is that sort of energy in the air that hmm. you know, like, living uh, things are being looked after, isn't it? I, I think uh, the good thing, uh, the interesting thing, when we talk about building and establishing trust in the workplace, then I think it is the first responsibility of the employer is mm -hmm. to put out the trust uh, out there uh, among the team members. Let them show uh, that you trust them. Let them know you trust them, not with your words, but, but with your actions. You have to make right. them feel at home. And uh, as you talk about, the, most of the workplaces, they have the culture of, uh, uh, of the fan club. And if you disagree or if you're not laughing at the jokes of the employer then or the boss, then uh, you are not the, uh, uh, one of the mm, uh, close employees of the boss. And he was not yeah. going to trust you. He's not going to uh, give you promotions or, or raise your salaries and bonuses and all of these things. And, and you will get the extra workload uh, and it, th this is the most of the workplaces and the the example i have i have mentioned in the earlier about the ideal workplaces by google facebook or microsoft these are the tech giant companies and they have established an ideal workplace where people feel at home they mm. uh, they they can work uh, however they like some some people are working by laying down some people are working by the pool some people are working and by sitting uh, at the co coffee table or, or however they like the, mm. the 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 purpose the goal the objective of the work is to deliver something as long as you are delivering something then you are adding value to the work and yes. your work matters but uh, 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 in most of the workplaces, they are simply stuck in the in the protocol, in the formalities that you have to put on the dress, you have to uh, mm. be on time, you just have to sit there, you don't have to look around, you don't have to talk to anyone, or you have to mm. let your boss know that you are working. If you are not, if he doesn't feel like that you are not working, uh, mm. Uh, then you are not working. He's not going to be uh, 
uh, happy with you. And mm-hmm. this is the world we are, that kind of workplace or the world is, I think it is across the world, such a workplace that be on time, be on dress, do not talk to anyone, look at your computer, at the, look at the screen of your computer, uh, just look busy, uh, your boss is watching you. Right. <laughs> yes. And also be productive. And this is mm-hmm. <coughs> oh. <coughs> the thing is, oh. how are you productive? And like mm-hmm. you were saying, mm-hmm. you, you were describing people, brilliant people who are mm-hmm. actually, to me, looked like they were brainstorming. So it doesn't mm-hmm. really matter if they're brainstorming at the, you know, mm-hmm. by the pool or at mm-hmm. the coffee table or wherever. They're actually mm-hmm. using their heads and their thought and their mindset to get mm-hmm. where they want to be. And and this is also um, the ambition in a workplace. What is your ambition, your personal ambition? Obviously, yeah. you would have to talk to each and every one of the members of the staff mm-hmm. to to hear him or her out about their ambition, what where mm-hmm. they want to go with their work. And you, you can sort of detect if if they are really inspired by what they're doing and if they have ambitions to do better. And it's not an inner competition between people. It's more about your ideas, your brainstorming, or how you can improve the quality of service that you're giving in order to feel better about yourself, basically, as an individual. And it doesn't really matter whether you're at work or at home. If you have a certain ambition about achieving things, then you're in your right workplace. You're at the right job, aren't you? When I look at my first job, it was the worst workplace environment. Mm -hmm. People, the employees, uh, the team members, they were just pulling their legs. They were uh, backbiting about you. And they were just Mm -hmm. uh, with the boss and with each other. And uh, uh, my, my, uh, the first boss that I I ever had, uh, I just worked there for for a few months, but it was the world worst work, uh, workplace environment. it was, uh, there, there were many things. Uh, they were pulling employees and pulling legs. Uh, the employees were pulling legs of each other and they were putting down each other. They were just showing uh, their efficiencies to the to the boss. And the boss mm. was focusing, they were at, the boss was asking people to, to spy on other, each other's employees. And mm. that sort of workplace I worked in. I worked there for a few months. And it made me sick, and mm. I was I was mentally and physically, psychologically I was exhausted. Mm. And when I say that it is an ideal workplace as a physical and psychological a safe environment, and mm-hmm. then I mean it by psychologically safe. That yes. People are people should yeah. feel comfortable at the workplace. Yes. That that no one is. Uh, you say what you mean. And it yeah. shouldn't be the other way around. But no. uh, the kind of workplace that I worked in, uh, it was, you don't mean what you say. There are hidden meaning behind the words. You are very good. You are smiling with you. You are eating with the person, but you cannot trust them. You no. cannot trust them that uh, they, could, they would turn around and stab you in the back at any time. That uh, whenever the, whenever the, whenever the, your opponent or your employee get, whenever he gets a chance, and that sort of workplace I I I worked in, mm-hmm. and you cannot uh, think about establishing trust there. But uh, it, it, no. it is it was the one place that I worked in, and I remained unemployed after that for for four or five years, around uh, five years, and uh, then I started my business. My business was perfect and. I am just uh, running my business uh, in in these days now. But uh, mm. uh, the other period of going there, uh, I visited, uh, I was called, uh, I sent my resume, and I went there for interviews at many places. And 
uh, the uh, the other part is everywhere I went, I I kind of I wanted to show my efficiency, and I think uh, the reason I remain unemployed is to to be over intellectual or over smart when the when your employer knows that your boss knows that he is over smart, who is smarter than me, then he doesn't have a place in my work environment. In my workplace or in my uh, in my office, yeah, because you are uh, you are you are going to jeopardize the credibility of uh, of the boss in the workplace. You are just going to expose him, and he won't have any respect or um, uh, value uh, among other team members or the people. He shows that uh, of his employees. I hope I'm making any sense. Uh, you are, <clears throat> you are, because it's it's also um, reliant on mm -hmm. how, if the boss boss is um, mm -hmm. reasonably self secure. Mm -hmm. It's it's also also about that. If if mm -hmm. the boss knows what he's doing and he mm -hmm. feels feels efficient enough to be mm -hmm. a boss, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, he's not going to be threatened by a smart um, mm. members of staff that is un working under him or under her. It's, that person is not going to feel threatened at all. If if the boss is really smart, he or she is going to um, uh, make use of that mm -hmm. high IQ there and and funnel that into something of use. And and one of the thing that a, a clever boss will do is to listen into the those individuals that have actually something to say and not take a, a, um, a constructive criticism as an attack on the boss it's more about the um, the way things have been done but what about doing it slightly differently yeah. to, to have a, a clearer outcome or possibly a better outcome in, in the service or that we're giving or, you know, uh, so it, the, 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 there is there is a way for the boss to funnel that ability mm -hmm. that is out there, either to suppress it mm -hmm. or make the most of it, you know, and, and that's where it's really trying for the boss. It, is the boss smart enough to, to make use of that? And, and make it into something that he or she can tell, well, I decided to make the most of that, those clever individuals and, and you know, make them work mm -hmm. for me and the whole as in general. So to it wasn't a threat the, at all. Yeah, to increase the productivity of the workplace as, yes. as a whole. Yeah. Yeah. And but it, it 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 should be it should be the ideal workplace. But in reality, it is not the case. Uh, mm. They just they are just the boss and employees. They just feel threatened by the smartness of one individual, and mm -hmm. and they don't make use of him. They just kick him out uh, because that person is exposing their uh, their lo less education or less intellectuality or or anything uh, their smartness mm. or their one person is exposing that so as soon as instead of using it for, to increase the productivity of the whole team of the whole workplace they just simply kick him out and mm. it, it, it is uh, uh, this is the reality of the world but you talk about uh, that uh, make use of him this is the interesting thing and it should be like that Hmm. But it is not. It, yeah, if 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 the boss is really ambitious about the yes. workplace, he he or she is going to make use of it. I mean, get the ideas, write them down, get, form a small committee about how to enforce that. You know, mm -hmm. form the idea of improving the service, if you like, mm -hmm. in which way to do it, in step by step, obviously, and get the whole group in that team to improve the service. This is how I see it. 
and and thereby obviously see who's really into this i mean working and wanting to improve the work people can have all sorts of ideas about how to improve you know the quality of service that you're giving and it's fine but it's how you sort of um present it that makes the difference between a winner and a loser so if you're able to get them through and, and form them into uh understandable um Feedback sort of or outline or yeah mm -hmm. sort of the, you know the idea in outline and then make use of everybody have everybody have their say about how to once everybody understands where this is going then everybody can have an input put their input in it and feel that they are actually taking part in this so it, it can be quite re revolutionary for the workplace yeah. Yeah. If, um, if fresh ideas are uh, made use of and uh, uh, the, the other thing is the it is only criticism. We don't see the positive feedback. If you provide, if the boss or other employees, the colleagues and peers, they provide positive feedback, then it it can work. Uh, but uh, the workplaces that I've seen or you must have seen, uh, experienced, uh, those workplaces have only one way uh, uh, destructive criticism. It's not the positive feedback. When you let them know that you are doing this way, there's other way to do it, a better way to do things. And uh, uh, honest feedback, positive feedback, and listening. Uh, listening is also very important. Listening to to you know, to the ideas of all the employees and keep your mind open and. And this is that's how I think when people feel safe uh, physically and psychologically, when they know that they are being heard uh, yes. by their boss, yes. by their employers, by their superiors, then they would openly share their ideas. When they don't mm. feel safe, they are not being heard, they are just being criticized for their creativity, then they won't, yes. in such an environment, they are not going to share their ideas. And no, because no. they are not, they don't feel trust. That's how I think you can establish trust. You can uh, you can prove your trust, and not by your words, but with your actions. Make them feel safe. Listen to them. Sit beside them. Go out in the, go out. Uh, have a lunch with them. Uh, uh, just to know them. Just yes. for the sake of just to know them. For the sake of uh, for, for the sake of knowing, not without any uh, where do you where where are you from, how long does it take you to to be here, and mm -hmm. what are your future plans? These are the small talks. They 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 make people safe, and they they know that then uh, the employees would know that they are being trusted, that the the boss is showing interest in them, and when you are close to someone, then uh, then you are going to trust him, that person. Yes. Or yeah. uh, this is the thing, an ideal workplace. So, what are your final thoughts? Sorry, Paul. Your is your final thoughts. Um, final thoughts. My final thoughts are basically this um, this ability of people to working together and present their ideas mm -hmm. and to make them understandable and make them uh, you know make your ambitions and and thoughts presented in a way that it, it can both be understood and make them interesting as well sort of prove that you have something there you know basically sell them to the working place so that the working place understands what's going on and accepts it and it is willing to try it out. Chances are it may not work, but at least test it and see if you can use anything from it and go from there. And hmm. um, I think that's how I think we have uh, covered enough. We have started our discussion 
from our experiences, we have grown that uh, physically and psychologically safe and creative, open listening, communication, and mm -hmm. positive feedback, not destructive criticism. And that's how all of these things collectively help you to establish and, uh, and a trust you can establish, allow you to establish a trust in the workplace. Uh, and that uh, was our topic for discussion. And thank you, guys. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, other people, for joining us for your comments. And if you have any questions, just leave it in the comment box below. I'll answer it to you. Uh, Paul will get back to you as soon as he can. And thank you. Have a good day. Good thank afternoon. You. Thank you. Uh, good me. evening or midnight in Iceland. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. And I'll see you thank next you. week. See you next week.